p.m. 3 p.m. here in the Netherlands in North Fike, 20 kilometers south of Schiphol Airport. Today we are talking about lasers, optics, entire supply chain for building for building cars. The industry is bringing together with Cell Banger and Talent Systems and other tier one suppliers to find business opportunities. So how do you make a car today? Of course, it all starts by designing and making the perfect chassis. In recent Epic Online technology meetings, we have brought together the communities of laser welders and laser cutters to address the needs of beam shaping, high power handling, as well as challenges in advanced automation or robotics. On Monday, November 22nd, we want to reunite these communities and bring them together with automotive OEMs to ask what is next for automotive manufacturing. Perhaps the biggest trend in automotive manufacturing is remote laser welding. This is a non-contact form of laser welding that utilizes laser beams from half a meter away using movable scanning mirrors and lenses, as well as intelligent optical and robotic systems, we can achieve higher processing speeds up to 10 times faster, as well as reduce maintenance costs. And remote laser welding opens up many epic opportunities. For example, the dynamic programmable beam shaping or the process monitoring to track the seam. Furthermore, 3D printing is today an essential part of car manufacturing, as Michael Breme, Head of Tool Design at Epic member Audi, explains. Here we see a hot forming die with cooling channels that today are still bored in the conventional manner. In the future we want to print segments, we want to print these cooling channels, as can be seen so well here in this sample. You can essentially bore cooling channels around corners, making the production of these dies much, much faster and much, much more economical. And let's explore the rapidly expanding laser laser engraving market, and here the biggest trend is the use of green wavelengths to mark on plastic parts. And what's new in the topics we discussed previously regarding laser painting, depainting or cleaning? Lasers have improved great in oxidation removal and decoating. Rust, coatings, paint, oils and many other materials can be quickly and efficiently removed. But I can't wait to hear what is next. Automotive manufacturing is one of Europe's most important and innovative industries. Let's keep it that way. Do not miss this opportunity to engage with our community of laser manufacturers, system integrators, and automotive OEMs. Sign up now to be part of a great conversation on Monday, November 22nd. We start at precisely 3 p.m. And it is precisely 3 p.m. And we are all here to start this fantastic meeting. Thank you very much, all the companies in the supply chain who have given us lots of input for this meeting, lots of ideas. Some of them are actually even bringing data and users to the meeting. We cannot thank you enough. My name is Jose. And as usual, I speak on behalf of the European Photonic Industry Consortium. I had the honor and pleasure to co-chair this meeting with my colleague and laser expert, Francesca Moglia. But behind the two of us, there is a group of hard-working employees, 15 people who we dedicate our lives, you know, the weekends, the nights, the evenings to the photonic industry, because we truly believe that with the technology that we have in Epic, there are no borders, no frontiers, no limitations. All of you know that we organize events, provide access to the network, we help you raise capital, we have the biggest website to find a job in photonics, and we provide you with market reports, but that's the least important. What is most important today is that the meeting today is about laser for automotive manufacturing, where by the end already of season five, what an amazing season it has been. Pay special attention to the meeting that we have in a couple of weeks, 6th of December, medical device manufacturing. And for all of you who are very active in the quantum technology segment, write down the 1st of December at 3 p.m. Central European time, we are talking about quantum computers and most important, qubit generation using either photonics, ions, or superconductors. That's going to be epic. And epic is going to be today. First of all, I would like to acknowledge or partner in crime. Nobody can do anything alone anymore if you want to be successful today. We are partnering with the ILO Association, the Association of Industrial Laser Users. You're going to hear later from our friend Dave. But also, I would like to thank from our media partner, Laser Focus World. What an amazing job you are doing promoting the activities of EPIC and the members of EPIC. Thank you very much for being our media partner today. 
most important in this meeting with the people, so with the supporter, the sponsors today, all the way from Finland, the company Modulite developed super, developed semiconductor lasers from the growth of growth, MBE growth, all the way to the assembly of full turnkey solutions to the end users. But also we like to acknowledge the support of the company making ultra fast lasers, lithium lasers, the company that can do from the fiber laser integration, the whole solution to have the ultra fast, ultra accurate laser poles. The company all the way from Lithuania that provides your laser optics, IBS coatings, Optoman. If you're looking for IBS coatings for, with a match laser induced damage threshold, Optoman is your partner. And last but definitely not least, the fast growing company Focus Light that develops and manufactures high power laser diodes, also laser optics, and provides various photonic application solutions, especially in the non contact heating, they do that extremely well, who also does, does things extremely well, who brought today cell banger, talent systems, Blackbird Robotics, is my colleague, the laser superhero, Francesca Moglia. Francesca, what's going to happen today? Thanks a lot, Jose, for the introduction. Yeah, so today, yeah, as you see here, we have these six speakers, but as usual, we don't want to only talk with them and you just listen, all of you others, and also you, all of you in YouTube. They, we want to really, really involve in the discussion all the supply chain that is represented here. And as you see, we have some automotive contract manufacturing that the uh, representatives that uh, will have to be ready to answer a lot of questions. So be prepared, all of you. <laughs> and then, of course, we thanks a lot uh, the main really main people here because we talk about laser manufacturing so we have la uh, automotive manufacturing and laser supporting it so we have a, of course a lot of laser manufacturers that uh, sign up and are here or see, i've seen them already many of them ultra fast not so fast uh, cw diode uh, even pixel so you are very welcome to ask all the questions and propose your ideas to the to the audience laser workstations very important otherwise we have to integrate the lasers they cannot stand alone but they can be supported. And then, of course, all the rest of the supply chain, as you see here, manufacturing services, they are also very important. Yeah, we have also system integrator in general, of part of the machine. Laser accessories are important. Added value distribution, of course, that's also mega support. Process monitoring systems, I keep hearing this since a week. So very thanks a lot for being here today. And I guess let's not uh, steal more time to our audience. And I give the word back to Jose. This slide, this amazing slide, Light. only corresponds to the companies who registered for the meeting today. So you're an Epic member and you see, you don't see your logo here. That only means you forgot to register for this meeting. Don't let it happen again. Epic-asoc.com, always register on time for these meetings. This meeting is also live streaming YouTube as usual. So hello, YouTubers in the world. If you want to ask any question or you simply have a room for cooperation, write it in the chat here in YouTube. I will read it in the room. Also, remember, if you want to get in touch with any of the participants today, all you have to do is send me an email, jose.photo at epic assetcom and I will be more than happy. I will be static to make the introduction. As Francesca said, let's get the meeting started. And as I said in the beginning, nobody can do anything alone anymore. Fabrizio Ferranti from Univet, you are doing great. Nobody can do anything alone anymore, right? That's why today we are partnering. We are partnering with Dave McClellan, who is the Director General of the Association of Industrial Laser Users, ILU. Thank you very much for being at this meeting. You also brought one of your end users today at the meeting. Talent Systems will be at the end. Dave, the floor and the attention of everyone is yours. Thank you very much, Jose, for the uh, the introduction. And uh, I'm just going to share my screen now just to you to the topic a little bit. Um, as Jose mentioned, I'm the executive director at ALU and um, advanced laser manufacturing for automotive industry is uh, right up our street too. And uh, graphic which uh, originated from uh, Rofin, now coherent, uh, and I've uh, tweaked and modified it, so apologies, uh, trying to bring it uh, to, I mean, it's almost impossible to think of everything uh, that is covered by laser manufacturing in the automotive industry. But uh, let me take you through some of the key things. So car body, uh, cutting and welding in body, steel and aluminium, uh, hydroform tube cutting, tailored blank welding and uh, finished parts cutting. Uh, in the mirrors, there's glass cutting applications. There's ablation to put text onto the glass. In the tires, we've uh, seen in uh, previous meetings, uh, mold cleaning, uh, removing the rubber from uh, tire molds and uh, also mold tool repair, as well as tire marking uh, or engraving. Uh, in the lights, we can see uh, opportunities there. The OLEDs, 
uh, something that are coming uh, coming now, and plastic welding to encapsulate and seal uh, lights against uh, ingress of moisture and to keep them reliable. Uh, in electronics, we see copper welding. We see plastic welding again to uh, keep the electronics safe and, uh, and moisture free and marking of uh, virtually every part on the uh, on the car now has has laser marking. Motors and engines, of course, uh, we have a mixture at the moment of internal combustion engines, electric vehicles and hybrids. Uh, so there are a lot of opportunities for uh, laminations for cutting and welding in motors internal combustion engines for connecting rod scribing and for hardening and texturing of, uh, of drive shaft components. In batteries, of course, uh, it's flavor of the, of the decade. Cells, lithium packaging and interconnecting, uh, cutting copper and welding uh, to join tabs together, etc. Thank you very much, Dave. You have a dream job because you are the, the Director General of the Laser User Association and I'm the CTO of the Laser Technology Providers. Together, working together, we can be stronger, stronger than anyone. If we ever have Francesca or Laser Superhero, then nobody can beat us. But today, I really want to thank you because you brought Ibai Sanchez from Talent Systems to this meeting as an end user, one of your members. I can't wait. He's going to be your last speaker today, so you have to stay till the end. Dave, once again, danke. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. You're doing a fantastic job. I want to start the meeting now. And to start the meeting now, I want to bring one of the top people in the online technology meetings dedicated to lasers in the EPIC network. He's been the one who has given the most input at our meetings. We wanted to acknowledge that by giving him the opening keynote presentation. Marcus Kogel Holacher, Head of Department R&D Projects for the company, leading the laser heads in the world, Presitech. The floor and the attention of everyone goes to you, Marcus. Marcus, you may be muted because we can't hear you. Marcus. Thank you. Yes. Jose, for the kind introduction. Thank you, Francesca, for the invitation. And uh, thank you all for listening this afternoon. Um, as you already heard from Jose, this is a, still a hot topic. It's still a hot topic. Automotive industry and laser applications in the automotive industry is uh, still one of the uh, um, areas which uh, drive photonics industry, definitely, or, uh, especially here in Germany. Uh, so we as a car country and uh, one of the uh, inventors of uh, uh, automobiles, we are, we are still very proud of our um, uh, um, technologies. And uh, for the last 25 years, actually, I'm involved in laser technology. I've seen that there is a lot of uh, things which have been uh, started in automotive industry. And that's why I took the chance uh, to do a presentation here. And I took the chance to take that headline of my presentation, which is not all, only the uh, future of uh, um, mobility. It's also the future of the technology which drives the autom or, uh, the, the um automotive industry, we see that uh, we as providers of technology, we need to be, um, we, we need to provide technology which, which automates, uh, uh, which is automated, which speaks with each other. And um, yes, for sure, this is an important issue. So uh, just one slide uh, to, to the company I'm working for, it's, it's Presitech. We still see ourselves as a worldwide leading partner in the uh, 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 laser materials applications and also measuring technology. And you will see a little bit of both in the next uh, few slides. I know that I have limited time, but I will uh, uh, try to, to bring all the information I, 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 I thought I need to bring for this event to this afternoon. So uh, for sure, Body in White is one of those applications which is still uh, running um, in, 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 in mass production. Um, it is an application where we have seen that there had been uh, um, a, a combination of lasers, of uh, processing heads, and of sensor technology, uh, which is of, of really high importance to, to uh, uh, um, run those applications. And I have selected one of the applications which more or less was uh, also presented in the 
in the in the intro uh, which uh, the epic uh, uh, um, made for for this event it's the welding of uh, aluminum parts and we have seen that uh, if you you bring parts together you always have um, uh, tolerances you will always have tolerances and you have to react on these tolerances because laser welding um, uh, it's, it's quite flexible, but laser uh, applications or the use of lasers um, will be of extreme high quality if you're in the right process window. And you have to see what is the process window, what is the situation on the, on the, uh, um, in the, the uh, uh, um, beam material interaction point. And that's why you need sensor technology. So one of those applications we have seen is remote welding. Um, uh, we have uh, fulfilled the demands of the customer Audi with the Weltmaster scan track and inspect, inspect uh, technology, which is a, a scanning system in combination with sensors for guiding uh, the uh, uh, laser beam for detecting the uh, situation for uh, oscillating the laser beam with respect to the uh, gap size or with respect to the mismatch um, of, the, of the two sheets. And so we were able to really uh, run applications uh, um, at, at extreme high speeds and very flexible, which was not possible before uh, with the aluminum uh, um, material. So one of the applications we started with, you see here, is the door of the A8. Um, but uh, for sure, the uh, applications in e-mobility have uh, taken over uh, uh, right now. And uh, we use the identical same technology um, in, uh, in the welding applications of uh, this um, battery housing. So it's the same material, or more or less the same material, um, but uh, uh, um, it's not a door, as I said, it's a housing, but uh, the, the, the situation um, of uh, uh, um, the, the, the sheet thickness and the uh, mismatch could be the same as uh, in the door application. So this is uh, where um, that solution with Weltmaster uh, took over from uh, real body in white into the immobility. E and immobility e definitely we will uh, see that um, actually sure in the next applications immobility e is one of those uh, um, uh, things which is driving photonics industry uh, in the last two three four years and uh, we ha all have seen that it's a mega trend and um, um, that the electrification of the power trend uh, is, is, is really changing the uh, value-added um, uh, employment structures in the automotive industry. So this will be uh, 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 changing the industry a lot in the next years. And uh, we actually, we in Germany, we see that there is a, a very a remarkable amount of uh, um, applications transferred to, uh, to, to Germany in the area of battery. And this is one of those uh, uh, parts of the whole uh, 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 um, uh, mobility, e mobility solution which uh, which is uh, the the most complicated uh, and actually we started to 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 convince the decision maker, makers uh, in the uh, um, e mobility industry or in the uh, at the OEMs um, uh, that that there is a undoubted advantage of photonic tools in that uh, relative uh, relevant production change and this is where we where we have started, we have seen even in COVID-19, which hammered the auto industry, that uh, the applications in e-mobility are, are, are raising and the forecast of these applications is so uh, uh, important that I think all those uh, key players in, in, in photonics industry will have uh, remarkable uh, um, uh, numbers of applications in that field, so we have started to to uh, 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 or to, to to distribute the applications uh, in uh, uh, battery applications and in uh, the the hairpin, which is part of the the uh, um, 
the motor of the e-motor and uh, so uh, the, the the battery applications this is a, a, a really serial production where you see a lot of uh, uh, lasers, laser possible laser applications from the battery cells itself to the modules to the battery box, um, and in the end, uh, hairpin or fuel cells. This is everything where laser technology can take place, and we have reacted on on that um, uh, amount of of uh, possible applications by. Uh, bringing together all the knowledge of Presitech um, uh, into, into one system, which we call a scan master. So you see the can, scan master uh, um, also contains uh, uh, our expertise in laser cutting because we have uh, implemented our focus and zoom uh, a module from the pro cutter from our cutting of uh, head um, into that uh, scan master uh, device. We have implemented the OCT technology as a sensor technology for show the photodiode, as we call it, LWM, and camera technology. Um, so all the, the sensors which are needed to, to automate processes are you find in that uh, one technology. And uh, uh, the, all the, the, the modules which uh, are uh, um, working together here they are really super reliable technology. So we have a, a scanner from ScanLab, which is multi-thousand times in operation in industry. As you see, we have the ProCutter, which is multi-10,000 times in industry. And, and all the, the, the expertise from the Weltmaster, which I presented before, is inside. Uh, also the, the, the photodiode system and the OCT and the camera-based system. So this in the end is what we call scan master. And for sure, if you talk about sensors, if you talk about uh, um, uh, bringing more uh, intelligence into the uh, uh, um, out, uh, uh, into industry, into uh, serial production, you need to talk about artificial intelligence. This is a very hot topic. There is a, a, a Presitech department in Karlsruhe, uh, which is uh, only working on uh, artificial industry, which is what we call Presitech Incubator, which is at the University of Karlsruhe. And um, we now have a, really a remarkable number of applications where we are able to transfer our sensor signals for example, it's LWM, but all the other information coming from camera, coming from OCT, into direct physical values. So it's the it's the uh, uh, resistance which is important, and the customers want to see if it's coming to uh, electrical components, or you see the the the, uh, the stress here. Um, so um, this is one of those things which. Uh, you will see a lot in, 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 in the next years, not only from Presitech. So thank you very much for listening. I think my time is over. Um, so uh, uh, thanks again for inviting me. And uh, if there are any questions, uh, I'm here for the next two hours. Thank you very much. Great, Marcus. If you didn't, I mean, you always over exceed in expectation. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks a lot. And I you really, uh, we had a, a, a bit of discussion beforehand, uh, this meeting, and you really brought the hot topics that we really wanted to discuss, these mega trends, of course, that are bringing up a, a little bit the, the technology even more than before. And uh, I see that I'm not the only one impressed because there are questions coming. So I give the floor first to the question from the audience. So Thibaut, for example, from Blackboard Robotics, please feel free to ask the question yourself. You wrote it in the chat, but we like you to talk and you get familiar with the audience. Thank you. Thibaut, Thibaut, you can maybe mute it. Yeah, I, I was mute. Yeah, um, there you go. <laughs> yeah, um, Marcus, you showed slides um, that um, had a very low forecast for fuel cell cars. But uh, if we look in the, in the last months, at least my perspective is that fuel cell cars are very trendy at the moment and the outlook is better than shown in your slides. Do you think that it's just the, the forecast that you use is kind of outdated or do you think uh, your personal uh, impression that fuel cell cars are maybe really interesting but will stay very low uh, in the next 10 years? 
So I, 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 I'm still of the opinion that uh, fuel cells and cars will not that that uh, hot topic. I think fuel cells will be more in in in, in uh, the, the the public um, uh, um, transportation in in trucks, in in buses, or in trains, or in in ships, but maybe not that much in the car. I think the car will still stay at the battery and uh, at that um, what we what we see now. Um, so, uh, but for sure, every every number, every statistic is outdated the, at that moment you just presented. <laughs> Yeah, but also the point is let's talk about it and see if there are reactions. Of course, yeah, it's a good point. So for uh, normal use cars, maybe it's still uh, not the, the booming technology, but uh, yeah, talking about it and see how the reactions are is the best to see are also the end users are doing. And uh, thanks a lot to Thibault for the question. Then I have a question because it was fantastic how you brought how you can weld aluminum in the body in white and also use the same technology or at least you said very similar way for batteries. But now I reverse a bit the question. So that the body in white there helped uh, in them using the applying the technology to batteries. What is actually then that is still missing? So where is the challenge? You know, you go back to the epic questions. <laughs> where is yeah. it that is still not easy to apply on the uh, e-mobility part of, uh, of automotive that is still a bit to improve in your opinion, Marcus? Uh, so, um, so we will see that. Uh, I'm pretty sure we will see that later in the in the presentation of Thibault. Um, so, uh, especially when we talk about uh, fuel cells, uh, we will talk about high speed, extreme high speed welding. So, uh, and uh, to get that welding process uh, uh, really in in the in a robust. Uh, um, a process window. This is this is really a challenge. Not only because maybe the the scanner systems, the high speed scanner systems, are not available right now. It's the process itself, and it's the physics of uh, of uh, beam material interaction and of of melt and uh, resolidification and all that stuff. So this is this will uh, uh, definitely be the focus. Not only at the um, at the uh, um, module site it's also will be the focus in the in the r d and uh, in in, this, uh, in, in uh, universities um on the on the other applications i think it, it will be uh, it will be robustness and it will be the the correct process window and uh, spatter free so to, or if there is uh, any any deviation from the process window to detect that that means to have the right sensors in place which will detect the failures which are uh, um, uh, uh, occurring because the products which uh, the, the, the end products after the last photon has done the weld uh, are so uh, costly that you, uh, you, you cannot throw them into the trash bin. So you need to know that they are 100% um, correct. And if there is a failure, you need to know where the failure is and you need to know how to rework the failure. And um, yeah. And this is where we were working uh, on. Uh, the old industry is working on robust processes. And uh, that's why there are green lasers. That's why there are um, spot in spots or um, uh, uh, um, spot and ring applica uh, uh, laser sources, which all uh, uh, contribute to robust processes. Thanks a lot, Marcus. Thanks. That's a really nice overview on the where is the, the way to go to uh, improve and even imp improve then the throughput there. Eh? That's a good point. And uh, so these are all things to, to keep in mind for uh, further uh, yeah, reflection also with the audience. But now I see Jose. Jose wants to ask you something. Yeah, yeah? <laughs> what a beautiful piece of equipment. Thank you, Francesca. What a beautiful piece of equipment we have here. And I'm amazed that you to talk about the laser welding monitor camera there, the process monitoring with LWM. I have here people in the room from new imaging technologies, uh, new infrared technologies, Hamamatsu, that are very interested about what is the wavelength range to monitor the laser welding, the seam, and the profession and the leakage that could be in the process. What wavelength ranges are you using? Is it short wave, mid-wave infrared, long wave infrared? Yes, yes, yes to all. <laughs> So it's it's uh, um, so the sensors are, are working in all the wavelength areas, which are important, or where we know that uh, there is some uh, um, 
specific information uh, on the process quality. So it's going from visible to infrared. Uh, so it's a little bit of everything. The OCT is also working in the infrared uh, because we are using uh, uh, um, all in all fiber technology. That means there are fibers uh, for the reference paths which are um, uh, used here. So that's why it's, it's, it's that compact. Um, so yes, uh, it's, it's no infrared camera as you're just uh, uh, mentioning MIT um, because uh, we have seen that uh, um, the, 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 the real-time process monitoring is okay with OCT and with uh, uh, the LWF. The real-time process monitoring is okay with, with OCT and, uh... and LWF and not with the camera. Okay, <laughs> that's a very interesting point of discussion, but Francesca yeah. is telling me, so no, we, don't, we have... don't start, but yeah, I am we, very, we, very we, curious. No, 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 I said, let's start. This was okay. like, ooh, it's hot. <laughs> we have, we have, we have uh, uh, 70 kilohertz with the OCT and 250 kilohertz with the LWM and cameras with very, very high uh, um, image uh, uh, um, uh, rates uh, in, in the region of five kilohertz are still extremely expensive. Hey, that's, I, why, I, that's why we took the decision to, to run with LWM and OCT for the in-process monitoring. They're not with the camera. I wonder if the two NITs that we have in the room on the s weird and m weird range would like to comment on that. Let me, let me go directly to them because they seem to be very shy. I, I see Rodrigo Linares already knowing that I'm coming to him. Rodrigo Linares is your main contact person at New Infrared Technologies NIT Europe. Rodrigo, uh, we just heard a challenge laid on the table. What Hola. is your take on this? Rodrigo doesn't have slides and he's allowed to have no slides because he was busy with me last week at Farm Next. So Rodrigo doesn't need slides. He will speak on <laughs> just uh, like a flow. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Jose. Uh, yeah, I I can agree with most of the things that Marcus has presented in the in his presentation, but not with his last uh, comment saying that <laughs> high-speed cameras are still expensive. We are offering a, a camera that can work up to 4,000 frames per second. And, and this camera, we think it's in the right price point to be introduced in the industry. And it's a very innovative technology, as, as everybody knows, uh, an uncooled camera, and that reduces most of the cost. And actually, we have done a real-time process uh, monitoring for uh, remote welding as well, using this camera in combination with artificial intelligence as he was presenting also before. So I have to disagree with you, Marcus, in this sense. <laughs> Talking about price said, makes me very press, nervous. Press but, uh, Presitec has, has took the decision to go with OCT and LW because these well, are well our, own, our own sensors. We develop our own. So the, uh, the, the margin is much better than if we... If we uh, well pointed, Marcus, but yeah. I don't like talking about price because it makes me very nervous and I, I don't want to lose my job. But I want to talk about technology. Uh, Rodrigo, uh, you are saying that you're using already MWIR, midwave infrared, for monitoring of laser welding. What is the added value of using midwave infrared for laser welding? I think when you move into the infrared, you see different things than when you are uh, using uh, visible cameras. Um, that's why we are convinced that, uh, that we have a, a technology that is competitive for this, uh, for this application in, in particular. There are things that we can see in the, in the male pool behavior uh, that are related to defects uh, arising during the process that uh, are clearly visible with our and detectable with our camera. And it's less sensitive to, um, uh, to high um, brightness um, or uh, reflections. Uh, and that can happen with the visible uh, with the visible camera. So that's why we are convinced that as you move into the infrared uh, beyond 1.1 microns, uh, you can see all the things uh, relevant to the process uh, to the process quality. From new imaging technologies, I have in the room the honor of having Francois Cousaget. Francois, are you with us? I say I'm. Do you hear me? Uh, what do you, what is your take on this? We just heard a, a challenge, opinion, and decision taken by Presitec. Uh, do you what would you like to comment? It's it's always hard to comment because uh, every every industrial aspect has their own specific cities. So they all, all, always are requirements that can be very specific to the process itself. 
um, what's it? Do you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Okay. Uh, what happens is that uh, for different applications, uh, the different requirements could be requir required. Uh, you mentioned the frame rate, but very often the um, the thermal response time is much longer yes. than what you need at very high speeds. So working at very high speeds, if the thermal time response is low, it doesn't make any sense. So th th that's why working in thermal imaging uh, is not always necessary to run at very, very, very extremely high speeds. So, so th that's why I would just comment on that. Uh, now, more specifically on the shortwave infrared, what's interesting is that you can have both visible information and infrared information. And so typically be able to observe visual aspects and also thermal aspects. And so for lasers, it usually goes into high temperatures, especially for metal fusion, above, above 300 degrees. And you can image both this thermal information and this thermal cool down time and the uh, visual information. So that's why it's, it could be very useful. That's why we can see sphere imaging also for uh, these applications too. So I, I'd say it really depends on the application and there's different, there are different cameras out there because there are different requirements. So I, I see huge success on the s weir on the laser metal deposition. There is, is very, very successful right now for, for your company. But on the on the welding, uh, it is not clear for me what is the, the uh, not clear for me, maybe clearer for Marcus, but could you summarize quickly what is the added value of bringing s weir especially the, in the 1.1 micrometers to, to, be to able laser to, welding? To be able to measure the, the temperatures in the, in the melting pool. The dynamic temperature changes. Yes, yes. Francesca, I am super excited, but I see Marcus uh, shaking. Marcus, look, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to drive to you with two cameras, one from uh, NIT and one from NIT, and we are going to test them in the, in the next generation of your amazing, truly amazing Scan Master 2.0. Francesca, back to you. Thanks a lot, Jose. So, yes, if Jose is already planning on traveling, it's a good thing because it means that in these two hours, we will have to bring other things to someone else. So this was just the start. <laughs> so now we have a question from the scanner world. So from Riley's Thailand, please, you can ask your question to, to Marcus, if I understood correctly. Thank you very much, um, Marcus. Thank you very much for the nice presentation. Um, you mentioned that um, high-speed scanning is required. Um, so for me, it would be interesting. What does high-speed means for you? Are we talking about two meters per second, two hundred meters per second? What is high-speed in in your world? You, Tyler, thank you. Thank you for the question. You will see that uh, I'm pretty sure after the presentation of uh, Thibault from Blackbird. What high speed really means, uh, I hope, Thibaut, that will be one of the topics you're talking about. Thank you. Um, so especially in the, the area of bipolar plates, there is a demand of, uh, yes, of the second number you were mentioning. It's, it's more 200 than two meters per minute. Okay. <laughs> okay. And uh, uh, everybody who knows bipolar plates, maybe maybe uh, uh, Rüdiger is also one of those who will talk about bipolar plates. But uh, it's it's always it's always a, a piece of uh, like uh, the dimension is like a piece of paper, and you have to weld that uh, in uh, in a fraction of a second. So just around. <laughs> so, yeah. So that's why uh, uh, it's it's. Uh, but but as Thibault will present later on, it's also the physics behind which have to be. Uh, um, taken into account to, to bring a, a good um, uh, uh, process or a good quality uh, uh, in the end. Thank yeah. you for that. But isn't at 200, uh, such high speeds, isn't the laser power uh, limiting Sema or the process window? Because the faster you scan, the more power you need, yeah. the more sensitive the entire process gets. Yeah, but the bipolar plates is more or less uh, uh, of a thickness of a few micrometers so it's yeah. not that uh, uh, thick sheet welding yes. it's more or less extreme thin sheet welding and that's why the the uh, um, laser power is it's not an issue here okay thank you 
Okay, that's great. So thanks a lot, Marcus, and thanks a lot for those who already interacted so far. Now I know there is someone who has an opinion as well. So let's move and let's stay still in Germany before we go to Blackbird, because it was like the, the call of, of Marcus that we have a bit later. <laughs> First, we go to Rudiger Brockman. So thanks a lot, uh, Rudiger, for being here today from Zellwanger. And uh, is the time to give you the floor and then maybe we stay, we keep going with this discussion because it's interesting. Thanks a lot. The floor is yours, Rudiger. <clears throat> so hopefully you can hear me now. Yeah, all good. Okay. Full screen, so, floor is yours. <laughs> thank you very much for the invitation and giving the chance to have a short pitch on Zellfanger and what we are doing. Um, my name is Rudiger Borgman. I'm working uh, since more than 25 years with laser now. Um, there's also a relation to automotive industry. I spent a couple, couple of years at um, Volkswagen in Wolfsburg and I introduced laser welding in Buddy and White. Um, and later on, I switched to, the, um, to a laser supplier. And since the beginning of this year, I'm CTO and CSO at Zeltwanger Group in Tübingen, Germany. And um, yeah, I will talk about our laser processing, you can see that we have um, several corporate competencies, laser processing, leak testing, automation. And I think it's really the mixture of these um, that gives the best benefit to our customers and partners. Because, you know, a lot of laser welding schemes have the necessity to be leak tight. And this is what we can combine. Um, before I start with the laser topics, let me introduce Zeltwanger. Zeltwanger is a family owned uh, company. Ulrich Zeltwanger founded this company in 1982. We have a holding structure with several daughter companies and, and subsidiaries, 420 um, employees, 420 to 450 revenues, about 60 to 70 million euros per year. And as I said already, our headquarters in Germany. Um, basically we have two big business fields on the left-hand side. Here we are more concentrated on contract manufacturing. So we are offering industrial services and assembly. That means we are making um, milled parts and sub-assemblies, but only with highest precision. Uh, we are not doing everything, but only the parts with highest precision, um, which can be used in optical industry, for instance. And in addition, we are doing prototypes and components here as well. And the second business field where I will talk about today is um, our industrial solutions. Here we're focusing on leak testing and automation. We are also having laser systems here. Uh, we are also having workpiece loading and unloading, for instance, for laser systems, but also for standard um, work tools. Um, or and in addition, <clears throat> we talk about production equipment for thermal management, like um, com, um, production equipment for producing uh, condensers, heat exchangers, radiators, and so on. Um, you know, here you can see our global footprint, our headquarters in Germany. Um, also, we have um, subsidiaries in, in the US, Charleston, South Carolina, and one subsidiary in Czech Republic. And we're also active in, in China as well. But now let's let's talk about laser and um, laser applications in automotive industry in particular. Um, the most of our automotive laser application are based on this modular platform. We call it Excel. And with this Excel, we are serving several laser applications like laser welding, laser marking, laser cleaning. And in addition, we can also include laser uh, leak testing or additional assembly or functional testing in the cell as well. So the philosophy is to have several processes integrated in only one cell. And that means that you can be very flexible um, and very productive. So here are some automotive applications. Uh, we are focusing on conventional and e-mobility. Um, the top right application is welding of a shift fork, for instance. Here we're using uh, two scanner heads in parallel. 
Um, so a very high productive machine. And in the field of e-mobility, oh, we are focusing on the e-motor, especially hairpin welding. Uh, we are focusing on the battery area. And here I talk about cell two pack. And we are also having applications in the sensors and electronics area. So what are the challenges in this application? Most of our customers demand high flexibility. They have different materials, the geometry of the parts that have to be welded, that have to be clean, cleaned um, is very, very different. And of course, more and more the people are talking about industry 4.0. And in the next slides, I want to tell you how we address these challenges. Let's start with the flexibility. And I told already about the platform of our Excel. Here we are having the principle of a very um, standard, standardized modularity. We have several um, modules for handling like these conveyor belts. We can use drawer systems. Um, we can integrate robots as well as um, XYZ systems. This is for the handling, but we can also integrate several process modules. Like I've explained already, this can be laser modules, laser welding, laser cutting, laser cleaning, as well as additional um, modules that come together with laser um, welding, for instance, in combination with leak testing. How do we um, apply, um, face a challenge for materials? Here we talk about laser parameters, and this is one example, the laser wavelengths. Marcus told about uh, green lasers already. So absorption is, uh, depends on the laser wavelengths. And what you can see here is, if we go to the visible um, area of laser wavelengths, blue and green, let's take out copper. Copper is the you know, black one. You know, in, in the infrared area, the absorption of copper is really, uh, really low. But if you go to green and blue, we have a higher absorption that enables better welding processes and it even enables heat conduction welding. So what we are integrating today in our systems is we are using infrared lasers, we are using green lasers, and we are using blue lasers. It really depends on the um, application and the requirements of the application. And the wavelengths is only one example. In addition, uh, we already talked about beam shaping, multi-spot welding, um, and, and different technologies. These new um, approaches enable additional um, applications like welding of aluminum, which was not possible that fast and with that high quality um, so far. Then the next challenge is geometry. Um, here I took an example from the hairpin welding. What we developed here is our own fixture because um, my statement always is the weld quality is set by the fixture. And what we did here is uh, we developed a fixture for hairpin welding. We patented it and um, with this you know, high flexible fixture, we, we can weld at least 99% um, of all happen um, e-motors. Last but not least, um, what is the requirement for industry 4.0? You know, more and more people have requirements regarding 4.0, predictive maintenance or product traceability. These are only two um, points. Here we are using different sensors sensors for the quality, welding quality, for instance, but also sensors for the condition of the equipment itself. Um, that means we are using OCT systems, um, systems from Prezitech. Uh, actually, we are even, even talking about the scan master, having it in our lab. Um, of course, we have the right interfaces. OPC or UA is a, a standard right now. Uh, we combine, combine the different sensor signals and visualize it. And in, in some cases, it's really 
quite easy to see uh, a trend you know, just by this visualization. And that means you can predict what's coming next. Um, one example on the right-hand side, this is a, an example from the leak testing. Here we can detect and predict the wear of a seal. You know? And that means um, we can, before a seal is failing, we can change it. Okay, uh, summing up this, that means Zeltwanger is pro providing more than just equipment. We are providing solutions for automotive laser processing. Solutions means we are not focusing only on one process, but we really uh, want to deliver the full package. We are looking uh, for partners. Partners can be customers on the one hand side uh, who need a certain process development, but we also look for partners in the process chain. We cannot do everything on our own, but with partners, we can deliver the best solution for, for our customers. And we are a pioneer in um, I 4.0 solutions. Once again, I say Seltman has more than laser. Our core competencies in leak testing and automation provide the most valuable benefit for um, your production processes. Um, and that means you can be faster, you can be um, better, you can save money in, because you need less coordination. Um, and, and therefore, Zeltwang, I think it's a very nice partner. Um, so that was a short pitch for Zeltwanger, And thank you for your attention. Um, I'm open thank you for any very questions. much. Rudiger, everyone in the room, this was the first ever appearance of Self Banger at an epic event represented by the CTO. We're talking about a tier one and contract manufacturing company, not only in automotive, but almost in any industry. Rudiger, welcome to Epic. There is something here in this network we call the Epic Question, which is for you to tell us what you can do for the others and the others can do for you. We want to ask you if you could give us a few challenges, a few items of your Santa Claus Christmas list so we can find you the right cooperators, the right partners. What is the biggest headache today in your mind? The biggest headache, um, the biggest headache is really that um, the bigger OEM customers, they want to have a full, fully uh, delivered line. Yeah? And um, although I said that we are combining laser with leak testing and laser with automation, yeah, we need additional processes before the laser process and after the laser process. And would, I would be happy to, to have more partners on site um, and to, to be a better supplier for the big OEM. When you talk about other laser processes, you talk to adding other functionalities such as uh... 3D printing or ultra-fast femtosecond lasers for patterning or surface structuring or anti-addition? Anti is that what is in your mind? Yeah, you're, you're right. On the one hand side, if we um, take, for instance, the process chain for bipolar plates, now there are several appli laser applications like laser welding, but also laser cleaning or so. But in addition, there are... Um, other processes which are not related to laser, like coating, like adding glue or so. Yeah? So this can be laser processes, yes, but also different processes. And in addition, um, regarding industry 4.0, yeah, we need to collect all the data we, we can find along the complete production line collect them all and find, uh, um, analyze them and find the right algorithms to see trends and uh, yeah, do predictive maintenance, not only for one process, but perhaps for the full line. There is a huge trend right now in Europe, Rudiger. We are making ultra-fast lasers, femtosecond lasers with pulse width in the 150 femtosecond and less. And we are managing to use it in many industries that they actually today are driving, for example, the consumer electronics sector. I want you to meet one, one of my very good friends and one of the companies that is racing very fast in this industry on the ultra-fast laser. Is the, company is called, the company is called Fluence and the CEO is here with us. His name is Darius. Darius Chesh, coming all the way from Warsaw. Uh, I guess you have something on your mind to co collaborate with Rudiger from Selvanger. 
Hi, Rodinger. So thank you very much for your talk. So it's it's very nice to uh, see your advan advancements. And uh, I just wanted to uh, very briefly, like, uh, see maybe also how we can contribute to automotive. Um, so uh, if, if I just uh, find how to share my slide. Not this Button of the Zoom window, arrow up that says share screen. And afterwards, select the window that you want to share with the world. Of course, of course. Uh, yes. <clears throat> so there it is, right? Uh, so I just, just wanted to share with you with this one slide uh, and, and to show you that, uh, well, femtosecond lasers, of course, are, are useful for automotive, right? And like uh, Rudinger, you, you said that uh, at one micrometer, it's, it's a wavelength that is very useful, right? And we, uh, at Fluence, we developed some lasers that might be very useful for automotive. So operating at high powers, at high repetition rates. Uh, and this is what I understand might be uh, interesting for functionalization of some surfaces, for example, some tests uh, that we already done in our uh, micro machining lab in Wrocław was uh, concerning some elements that could be useful, like lithium ion battery cutting or glass cutting in volume glass marking uh, and, and this different uh, structures. So I don't know if this is something that you also have experienced in, is this uh, commonly used in uh, automotive industry? Uh, what, what do you think, Rudinger? Um, thank you, Darius, for, for um, talking about uh, these femtosecond lasers. In fact, I, I did my PhD on micro welding Mm -hmm. uh, with nanosecond lasers uh, 25 years ago. This was welding of very recent foils. Um, perhaps this can be transferred to uh, today's bipolar plates. Um, and what certainly is unique for femtosecond lasers is the quality of the process uh, result. You know? um, and the applications you, you mentioned here are really relevant um, for automotive industry. And, and you know that um, femtoseconds lasers are used for drilling injection nozzles since years now. Um, what, what would be my wish to you is <laughs> to have a higher output power because uh, one drawback for, for these femtosecond lasers is productivity. Yeah? If we talk about surface applications, for instance, you know, we need to have a high surface rate. Um, and um, actually, I'm thinking how we can introduce or integrate femtosecond lasers in our systems um, and, and find the right applications. And higher average output power would certainly be one, one uh, advantage. Okay. Okay, so this is something certainly we can help with because we not only have uh, for fiber lasers, so, so you get the stability and reliability, but also we go towards higher average power. So for example, our Jasper laser, it has uh, 60 watts uh, of average power. Uh, well, so, so we we be going there. Hopefully, uh, it will be at some point enough for you. But what, what about glass cutting, for, like you also mentioned? So is this something yeah. interesting, yeah. right? Certainly, you know the trend of, of um, more and more cars having displays in, in the cockpit. Yeah, um, I don't think that the, the windows is, um, windshield are so. This, in my opinion, that's not the right application because uh, you know, would have some problems with cutting it. But having the displays in more and more cars, yeah, this would be a nice application for for your lasers because. Um, you know, it's a question of design. You, know, you want to sit in your car and have a unique design. So the, the shape of this displays is, uh, um, is related to each car manufacturer. That means you have to be very flexible. And this, can, this in my opinion, can certainly be an application for, for glass cutting with femtosecond lasers in automotive industry. I don't know, have, uh, do you have any... Um, experience with cutting um, windows or the side windows or front shields or so? 
Uh, yeah, so we, we, we do have experience in cutting, well, glass in general is not so big format. So we do have application lab in Rostov, like I mentioned, but uh, we, we still, it, you know, limited to small samples. We, we haven't tried big ones, uh, but yeah, also um, uh, we, we collaborate with a couple of guys uh, also present here on this on this kind of solutions. Uh, so maybe you will hear more in the like uh, coming up talks, you know, maybe by mm. by Hall or-, or uh, Exactly, but, yeah, but is... I, I don't like waiting, uh, Darius, I don't like waiting. So Nathan, when, when every time in any meeting I hear glass cutting, I always, I always <laughs> look at you. A challenge was laid on the table, I would like you to comment. So uh, yeah, we have done a cooperation with Fluence with our deep cleave module. Yes. And I think there are very impressive results so that we're waiting to publish soon because we depend on Darius and his responses. But generally, yes, there are methods of shaping the light to achieve this process. Of course, uh, each in his own application, we just provide the optics for that, but uh, for optimize for this purpose. But I think that today I came to talk about another thing, right, Jose? Yes, you did, but allow me a few seconds until I give you the floor for that one. I just wanted to show uh, Rudiger that we are here looking for partners, and here is where the magic happens. These two companies are working together because they met in the Epic Network. Uh, Rudiger, uh, one question. I want you to dream away. Tell me your ideal laser that you couldn't find yet in the market. Dream away, even if it's impossible. Just dream away, and we'll do our best to find you something as close as possible. Okay. <laughs> This would be certainly a challenge for Darius because I'm, I'm dreaming of a multi-kilowatt femtosecond laser. You know, um, I told you that I have experience in micro um, processing and I think there's a huge potential for micro, or well, let's say femtosecond laser, short pulse, short pulse lasers in the area of surface uh, applications and in improving the quality and cutting and uh, also in additional um, um, other processes. So what I would like to have is a multi-kilowatt femtosecond laser. A multi-kilowatt femtosecond laser. You know, when it comes to the femtosecond laser, a very important part of it is the optics. I have one of the best suppliers of laser-induced amid stress hole, high laser-induced amid stress hole optics in the room. Actually, the company Optoman, Constantinas, Acho for being here with us today. Is there anything in your mind when you hear about this challenge, a multi-kilowatt femtosecond laser? Do you have the right optics and the right partners for providing that? I can say hi, hi all. Thank you for the introduction. Well, yeah, and um, I hear, you know, femtosecond lasers and optics and multi-kilowatt. <clears throat> This is definitely what you know uh, we are experts at, at. Uh, and you know uh, I'm inviting you to next week new product uh, release uh, on Tuesday, and we will uh, present uh, some great uh, optics that we ma uh, made for femtosecond lasers and that especially work for multi kilowatt uh, femtosecond kilosecond lasers. So yeah, uh, we develop we you know uh, had like several years of development. And I could say that, you know, this is an uh, outstanding product right now. So one micron and uh, femtoseconds uh, and yeah, multi kilowatt. Yes, uh, we can do it. <laughs> Rudiger, yes, so you know, every month we organize the Epic product release in which the Epic members present their new products and Optoman is coming for the next one. So do not miss that one. And also at Epic, we help you accessing, accessing technologies that are, have been actually provided by the European Commission. And with that, Francesca Moglia is our main contact person for the European Initiative Pulsate. Francesca, can we help, Rudiger, can we help Selvanger? Yes, so thanks a lot, Jose, for this, uh, giving the words to me for this. So yeah, Rudiger, there is these initiatives where we basically provide cascade funding, but also services of different kinds in supporting advanced and additive manufacturing in Europe. So the point is that if you, this is meant to, for people that never tried laser before, but also that they want to improve their technology application. And the advanced part implies also the industry 4.0 thing. So for 
for this thing that you specifically address, definitely you can exactly. So this is like our logo for different application. As you see, there is a little car. So automotive is definitely in the main six cores of the applications, but we don't restrict to this. We also, also have the possibility to really uh, support you with the little consortia that can have some money, but also that the services that our competence centers are providing. So these are the two kinds of calls that uh, Jose is showing. So there is technology transfer experiments, but also adopter user cases. And depending a bit on your, on your need, we will open the first adopter user case call in January. And then the another one for technology transfer experiments in um, spring next year. So keep an eye on this. We can also talk offline about it, how Selvanger can profit from this and how can basically access a bit the support on um, in this reform on zero, but also automation, everything that you put on your list was uh, uh, everything that was suitable and to possible to discuss and how to help you. So this is one thing. And then a second activity that we do in Epic is also providing picosecond laser the kilowatt level. So that is not like, <laughs> there is not a femtosecond laser. This we give it to, to Fluence and to all our femtosecond laser heroes here in the room. But um, we have a project where, where um, uh, Trumpf is actually developing a 1.5 kilowatt laser at picosecond level for surface structuring at like uh, square meters per minute level. So if you're interested in this, also this can be discussed and we can uh, see how Zellwanger can profit from this as well. So, and this is just two things. Uh, imagine what <laughs> we can so, talk about even Ru more. <laughs> Rudiger, the, the suppliers, the funding, and the end users are around us. I want you to be closer and more often at these meetings. And many people are gonna be contacting you because they want to work with you. One of them, is the person who's going to intervene just before Nathan Kaplan from Holor is Harald Peer from Senogent. You had a really interesting comment in the chat. I want you to voice it at Harald and see what is the reaction of Rudiger and the rest in the room. Harald Peer from Senogent. Yeah, hello everybody. So um, uh, I'm a little bit engaged in uh, circular economy projects as well, and. Um, uh, if you look at my question, we, we look, we, we discuss a lot um, high precision assembly. Now, uh, what do you think about high precision disassembly so that the materials could be used uh, without much further treatment for exactly the same purpose again, much like, you know, reusable bottles uh, uh, in, in, uh, in our, uh, um, yeah, uh, household uh, that can be used again for the same purpose need, need to be cleaned obviously but not remelted and and repurposed and and uh, and um, and so uh, we are talking a lot about battery manufacturing uh, which involves a lot of welding obviously are there ways to disassemble batteries in the very same way and to use to kind of refill the batteries with new uh, cathode anode material and uh, electrolyte Thank you. Rudiger. So, so thanks for this question. I, I mean, um, we have to think more about reusing and disassembling. I know that there are all, already some projects going on in uh, German institutes, but um, the, the point is, especially if we go to, to battery, yeah, the resources are very valuable that we are using in, in, in battery production, and we need to get um, back this value from, from the batteries which we don't need anymore. Yeah? And so therefore disassembling is, for me, myself, it's a huge field of applications, especially also for, for lasers in, in the future. Thank you very much, Rudiger. Welcome to the Epic Network. It was fantastic to have you here. Rudiger Brockman, the CTO of Selvanger, looking for partners in the Epic Network. Today, you know, Rudiger, I love when the Epic members come with their end users. Uh, the next that we're going to tell you about is a success story of the Epic industry. Holo Or, represented by the CTO, Nathan Kaplan, is bringing one of the key success stories in remote welding, which is Black Bear Photonics. Nathan, thank you very much for being with us. Tell us what you do and then introduce yourself, your partner. I love when people do my job. The floor is yours. Thank you, Jose, for this kind introduction. Uh, and really, usually I come here with some nice optical concepts. And today I'm really excited to come with a real actual proof of application. 
kudos, all the kudos go to Blackbird and Scanlab, our sister companies in Tech Invest. So before I dive into the application, I will talk a bit about myself and Holoor. So uh, I am Nathan Kaplan. I'm the CTO of Holoor. Uh, we are a diffractive optics and general micro optics manufacturer specializing in the shaping of high power laser beams, such as, for example, for welding and cutting and multiple other applications that were discussed here. We, are, we have more than 30 years of experience in design, manufacture and testing of diffractive optics that go to integrators, such as, for example, <laughs> Zewinger and uh, many other integrators all over the world. And uh, lately, I believe a year and a half ago, uh, a part of the company was acquired by Tech Invest, and we've become sister companies with Blackbird and ScanLab. And this has borne a lot of fruits in this cooperation and is continuing to bear fruits. And today I will talk about a certain aspect of it that is highly relevant to, we believe, to the automotive market. So as many of you know, uh, for many laser applications, such as the We've previously mentioned bipolar plate welding and also for immobility at the bottom of the tubes of the electrode welding, uh, power is no longer the bottleneck of the welding speed. Uh, in the past, of course, power was, was limited. You could not weld because you need more power. But now uh, there are other physical effects that are limiting the weld speed and mostly things that have to do with the physical processes and the interaction of the metal pool with the moving spot shape, if, such as humping, under, undercut, and the cracking, various processes that occur when you try to weld very quickly. Now there is a ton of literature and quite a lot of other products that are aimed to solve this. And one of the let's say most successful ways of solving this issue of humping, and it will be shown later on by Thibault from Blackbird, which is speaking directly after me, uh, is by the use of the ring with central spot distribution, which is, I believe, quite familiar to a lot of you. And the idea is basically that you have a lot of the power in the central spot or not a lot of the power, as we'll see, and quite uh, and a part of the power in the external ring. The external ring sort of pre and post hits the welded material that is still liquid, and then the wetting is better of the metal, and you get less humping and you can weld faster. Yes, and can, you can use le more laser power and weld faster. Uh, and in bipolar plates where you need to move, to move very fast, it is highly critical. Now, there are many solutions for this sort of distribution of ring with central spot. Most of them are in the laser level. They, they refer to things such as ad adjustable ring mode or uh, ring mode fibers, etc. And some of these are electronically adjustable, highly flexible solutions that have usually a central core and and then another external core, and you can play with the power between them, and it's all fine and nice. But first of all, uh, the ring is always a multi-mode with the similar NA and the lack of focusability. You need very high NA to focus it down to something small. Uh, also, these lasers come out of the fiber with these high NA angles, and therefore they, they are limited. You need to use bigger optics in your optical system, which is not so nice for integration. So we thought of a solution that would work for both single mode lasers and multi-mode laser, allow welding with very small spots as well as multi-mode and large spots, and will be flexible and adjustable with DOEs. Now, for those of you less familiar with them, DOEs are static components. Diffractive optical elements, they do certain shaping and can make a ring with a central spot with some ratio, but it is normally static. You just get, for example, 70% in the spot, 30% in the ring. Now, each specific process usually needs to be slightly tailored for the thickness of the material, speed of movement, etc., to get the best process results. How do you do this with DOEs? With our flexi shaper concept. So the flexi shaper is basically a very simple module. It's made of two binary DOEs. And by rotating them one versus the other, you can shift the power from the ring to the central spot. Each module comes with a ring of a certain size in terms of angles. We can, of course, make modules for different angles. And the ratio is from 100% in the central spot to something like 84% only in the ring. And in the middle, you have usually efficiencies of above 90% in most configurations. And now this model is extremely robust. It's just two components. You just rotate them one versus the other. These are real labs results showing rotation over 15 degrees. The period is 15 degrees. You don't even need a full rotation. And the module itself can be tailored to any size, to different rotations, etc. 
It's made of high LDT DOEs that are suitable for multi-kilowatt lasers, no issue there. It's not like SLMs or some other active shaping. And once you hit the right process parameters, we can make you a single DOE, which is static and gives you the certain distribution that you found in your process development. So this module is a sort of a shortcut for welding process development for a certain material for a certain process. And then by using it to get the, the ratios you want, you can just afterwards order the direct certain ratio from us in a single DOE. Now, of course, it has a lot of advantages uh, because it works for both single mode and multi-mode. We can design for any ring size. It has very weak defocus sensitivity. You can see here, for example, 300 micron rings, two millimeters plus minus defocus, still more or less says central spot with an aura, will give you stable process results. It has high efficiency and it, it, it can be integrated just before the optics in the end of the system, the focus optics, making it very robust and leaving all your optics in the system as they were with the single mode fiber. So uh, now I'll go on to what we did this with module. And what we did with, with this module was to give it to, to Blackbird after and, and ScanLab. And uh, we tried to use it for single mode welding of bipolar plates. So onwards to you, Tibolt, and then we'll answer the questions together. Thank you, Jose. Okay. Thank you very much, Nathan. And I would like to ask you now to introduce the whole EPIC community to your partner. Okay. So uh, I'll introduce my partner and then he'll in introduce himself, I guess. <laughs> my, uh, our partners are Blackbird. They are our system company. They're specializing in uh, robot systems and precise uh, processing. And uh, in this case, uh, Tibalt will, I believe, speak for himself better than I can introduce him. But uh, Tibalt, please. Nathan, first, what do you do for them? So what we do for Blackbird is provide them with optical solutions, DOEs, modules, and not only for Blackbird, but for any integrator. And we are looking, of course, for partners that are in the integrator sphere to offer them solutions uh, for any of their light shaping needs, including beam splitting, focal shaping for glass cutting, and of course, these welding solutions and cutting solutions and additive manufacturing solutions. This module is suitable for all these three applications. For the first time at an EPIC meeting, we welcome Blackbird, the robotic system company represented today by Tivol Pautze Scherf. Tivol, thank you very much for being with us today. The floor and the attention of 757 members is yours. Perfect. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you to Epic and all the team. And of course, thank you to Nathan to well, allowing me to speak with you today and to share some of the results we were able to achieve together with OLOA and um, ScanLab. I am with Blackbird Robotics. I'm uh, responsible for leading the sales team. And my name is Thibaut Bautzeschef. Why am I sitting here? I started laser welding uh, more or less 13 years ago. And this is what I do uh, from Monday to Friday even uh, weekends sometimes, and I'm still enjoying it. So um, Nathan already gave a really nice introduction about um, what we do with the DOEs, just to like summarize how Blackbird, ScanLab, and HoloR work together. We are in one um, company group, the so-called Tech Invest Holding, um, situated in Munich. And why do we need um, a Blackbird actually now to promote or to provide ScanLab scanners to the world? Well, the ScanLab scanner is a scanner, uh, but if you look at our users today, they don't want to have just a scanner. They want a solution that works easily for the application that can like be adjusted to their um, requirements, um, to be set up to different kinds of weld geometries, um, to work with robots, to work with linear stages. And this is what Blackbird does since now uh, 12 years. So we are a system integrator. Uh, mostly for ScanLab scanners, uh, but we also work with a few other components. And uh, well, I would say 99% of our systems go into the automotive industry. Uh, we grew with the uh, market of welding car doors, like Marcus showed earlier today. And today, of course, the e-mobility is driving us. Um, and uh, my talk will now focus on the bipolar plates that we already addressed today. So what is the product? Uh, you already heard the DOE from Nathan. So DOE, this is an optical element. And now if you want to laser weld with a DOE, well, how does the product look like? Uh, what could you get from, from our company group? Well, this is what you see on the screen here. So this may look complicated, but this system here that consists of a scanner, a scan control unit and a software 
allows you to integrate the remote laser welding process within only two or three days uh, without spending time in, uh, well, making the electrical connection to the scanner, the interlock you need, um, triggering the scanner. Uh, you don't need a new software package to uh, weld your parts. Uh, you get the robot data, you see the data all into our software uh, installed on our computer. And uh, within just a couple of clicks, uh, you can set up your welding scene. Now back to this DOE element. So the DOE element, this is a piece of glass that allows us to modify the power distribution of the focal spot. So what you see here uh, on the bottom right, right corner, this is a scanner. Uh, so this is a 3D scanner in um, this case. And normally you would have a laser source, the laser goes through the scanner and is focusing the light and somewhere down there, the welding is happening. And now what we do at ScanLab and at Blackboard, we mount the DOE into the scanner and this DOE allows us to have this very uh, process specific power distribution. So this is just the theoretical part. Let's dive into the application. So what you see here, these are two very thin foils. So we talk, um, each of these has something like 100 micrometers. Uh, I really enjoy this PowerPoint uh, screen function here. And um, laser welding of these, this is kind of a challenge. Uh, so normally you will see somewhere, th this is a seam and actually it looks okay. The, the photo is not so good, but the seam itself, it's good. Uh, you see uh, process parameters here, close to 40 meters per minute and uh, welding with a single mode laser at 320 watt per minute. But uh, we want to weld faster uh, because there's laser power available with single mode lasers. We can weld up to five kilowatt with single mode lasers today. Uh, but what happens if we increase the laser power, but also the speed? Well, this is what you get. You may get seams with really heavy defects. Uh, and this seam, well, it's not responding to any kind of requirement here. Uh, there's no mechanical stability, electric conductivity is limited. Uh, you want to get rid of these things. These are so-called thumbs. They're so-called undercut, what you see here. Uh, big holes, uh, no connection here. So this is a really bad seam. So how can we transfer the welding speed from 39 to something around 80 meters per minute? Because this is the market's requirement uh, we face today. So just one slide to summarize the whole work uh, we did here. So on the left side of the slide, you see the bipolar plates these parts here. So in a fuel cell, uh, you have roughly 200 of these bipolar plates. And per bipolar plate, you may have one up to two meters of laser welds. This is what you see here. There's one long continuous weld uh, and small stitch welds in the uh, so-called flow field. Uh, and these are very small welds, as you can see here. Uh, and now the customer's requirement is weld these parts as fast as possible. And with a standard laser spot, so using a standard single mode laser uh, at high speeds, so let's say 70 meters per minute, well, this is what you get. You get these humpings here. Yeah, you saw the cross section on the previous slide. So this is so-called bad part and the customer will reject the part. Uh, we were now able by introducing the DOE to our scanners uh, to get nice seams. Uh, and this is what you see here. This is the weld uh, done at uh, 70 meters per minute with slightly increased laser power and with using the DOE technology. And uh, this weld is more or less perfect. Uh, it's a bit wider maybe, uh, but it's a perfect weld, has a very nice penetration. Uh, and this is just uh, achieved by influencing the way how the laser power is hitting the workpiece and how the, the welding process happens on the workpiece. So this was the, the, the crash cross, uh, how Holo R, ScaleLab and Blackbird work together. And uh, well, what you get at the end of the day, you get uh, nicer seams at uh, very high welding speeds, talking here about 70 meters per minute and are looking forward to reach roughly 100 meters per minute one day. Thanks a lot, Nathan and Thibault. So we finally had the numbers. These are the numbers we wanted to see. Well, I had the slides already, so I knew them, but <laughs> now <laughs> all of you could see it. Marcus from Prestec as well. So maybe we keep this for a discussion right after Rudiger's question, because the, the question is a bit more about Nathan's contribution. So thanks a lot to the two of you, but let's give the floor first to Rudiger for Nathan. Rudiger, you can ask your question now. Yes, Nathan. Um, thank you very much for your um, nice presentation. My question was, uh, could you calculate 
and deliver any DOE, any shape of DOE, if we are defining the shape which we want to apply. Yeah, thank you for that question, Rudiger. Uh, and the answer is basically yes. <laughs> but, but of course, we're limited by the optics of the system, the NA, the wavelengths, etc. But generally, we can calculate any weird distribution that you would like. I don't know, triangle with three corners and a tail, <laughs> or whatever. Uh, we have freedom of, uh, of control because we are using diffractive optics and we are using computer-based design methods. Is this limited to any um, power level or wavelengths? No, basically we work from the 193 nanometers deep in the excimer up to 10.6 in CO2 and power levels are the same as laser grade optics, lenses or whatever you have in your system because we use the same quality of coatings. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Great. So thanks a lot, by the, by the way, Thibault, for making it interactive, the slides, because we like when people show and not only <laughs> with the pointer, but also draw on this. So, Marcus, we have the numbers now. Let's discuss a bit with Thibault. How, where, where are the issues there? How can uh, we go get there even faster? We, see, we heard 100, 100 uh, meters per minute. That's the, 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 the limit and the, the goal. So what is your opinion on that? <laughs> yes. <clears throat> So I have I have seen that presentation before. Uh, <laughs> Tibo was so nice to provide some slides in uh, beforehand. So that's why I, I, I didn't know what what to expect. And uh, actually, um, this this more or less uh, contributes to 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 my um, to my numbers. For example, concerning uh, uh, sensor devices. So uh, still, I'm pretty sure even if we go 100 meters per minute and we need uh, to detect. Uh, a pause um, because these these bipolar plates have to be 100% uh, um, helium uh, uh, um, um, uh, hydrogen tight. So um, I, I I still don't see any camera device on the market which is able to provide that uh, um, the temporal and spatial uh, resolution. So even even if uh, NIT uh, says they have four kilohertz, this is not enough much too slow much too slow and so that is why we we, we still see that uh, more than uh, um, uh, about 100 or 200 kilohertz sensor technology which is at least for the for the uh, uh, um, spatial and temporal resolution the right one I, I, I know that maybe the the devices uh, uh, lack in in, uh, in, in, in sensitivity, uh, if you compare them to to to, to cameras, but uh, this is everything what we what we have right now. And so uh, I think if if really if lasers do the job here in bipolar plates, um, it will be still uh, some einige uh, steinige <laughs> Wege, so some stony stony paths to go uh, before uh, we have a, a, a working solution. I, we as a photonics family, not we as president. Hey, thanks a lot, Marcus, for your opinion. So I would say, let's go back to Thibault so that he can say, say his opinion directly. And then I guess, I mean, Rodrigo, <laughs> Rodrigo maybe has his last word because uh, it's it's correct to be fair. <laughs> yeah, please, Thibault. I, I can comment on what Marcus said. So it's true that um, we are now facing very high welding speeds. So we are talking about, well, much more than a meter per second. And so the temporal resolution of sensors need to be really, really high. But then again, ideally, even if I'm a big fan of sensors, the perfect laser welding process doesn't need a sensor. So the sensor is not there to like watch at every workpiece and um, the, the customer is worried because sensor signals are doing crazy stuff. Ideally, your welding process is stable and having a stable welding process, this is the key to success. And this is not just about having the right welding tool, it's about having the right well, workpiece, uh, it needs to be clean, the right laser, the right uh, clamping uh, fixture devices. So laser welding at these very high speeds, um, it's a very critical process. And it's a very fast, and there's no reaction time if anything happens. So we need to spend, again, the whole photonics community, uh, including the customers here. This is really important. Maybe sometimes I think this just just one click and it works. It's not that easy. Uh, it's really investing time. Uh, and some money, of course, in, in figuring out what is the stable, the most perfect process. 
Uh, and so that at the end of the day, it's just maybe one part from 10 million. That is a bad part. And for this one part, you need the right sensor. Uh, but the first idea should be to have a stable process that doesn't need a sensor, in my personal no. opinion. Tibor, when we talk about the right sensor, I had to bring you in touch with a person that I know the most in this industry and knows about sensors. We have in the room Jim Leach from Hamamatsu. Jim, good afternoon. I want you to meet my friend Tibor, and also I think you already know Marcus well. Uh, can you tell us what is your two cents in this? Yeah, so I, I was um, commenting, or I was, was going to comment on, on possibly more post-process. So looking at, at uh, X-ray inspection, so inline X-ray inspection of, of a weld, uh, post process, um, we see we're seeing quite a lot of this. Um, so where you've got a, um, a, a something like a, a sheet like this, where you have got that well process, um, and you want to see a full inspection of that, um, essentially as as before that leaves a production line. We're also seeing it, especially for copper status. Um, so looking for, um, I guess when it's uh, when you're welding copper, you're looking for for. Um, um, uh, where you don't get a full join, so you've got like um, uh, bubbles or, or um, voids in in a, in a weld junction. Um, so, yeah, that was that was more what I was where, where I was thinking of. Uh, obviously, from a laser point of view, it's, it's less relevant, but it is something that we do see, especially in this this sort of processing area. Um, and obviously, then relating back to, to sensors, then obviously we do a lot of of, um, of sensors infrared right the way through the the, the spectrum. So. Um, I think Marcus's point was, was quite relevant, actually, from that point of view. Uh, Marcus, could you like to comment on this? So, um, I think uh, th there are a few numbers uh, around uh, if the laser is doing the job in bipolar plates. And uh, I think this, uh, um, this in fact, uh, is... Uh, I, I think Thibaut mentioned something about 300,000 uh, kilometers per year. Uh, has to be welded, and uh, um, we have we have discussed that recently, and and, and uh, so we, it will be hard to find a sensor. I, I fully agree with Thibault. So we need to find a very very robust process window um, where we know that at least that easy overlap welding process works without problems, without uh, pores, um, without uh, uh, lack lack of fusion. And if we have done that, we don't need any sensors, unfortunately. But uh, so the best sensor is no sensor. I think that's true. But you, you've got to you've got to take into account that things do change in a process. And if you don't get a full weld, the last thing the last thing you want to do is send a product which isn't correct right through to a, an end user. So I think I think. You, X-ray inspection from the, from that point of view is a vital part of any system like this. Um, typically, where you're looking for that defect, where you're looking for that change in process. So I think there there are a few uh, experts on bipolar plates. Uh, uh, maybe not today in our in our uh, workshop, but uh, so um, yeah, we will see where the where the where the uh, how far the story goes with lasers and uh, high speed welding. Very good, thanks a lot. Now we have also a question more directly to to Blackbird and on uh, on their uh, capabilities. So from PI, you you wrote it in the in the chat, but please, uh, uh, Cliff, you can ask the question yourself. Hi there. Hopefully you can hear me. Yep, you can. Yep, we can. Great. Um, yes. So I, I was just curious about how um, if you're if you're scanning outside the field of view of the scanner, um, obviously. You, uh, you attach to a robot. Um, how does the robot give back its um, positional information to the the scanner? Um, does it use some sort of mark on the fly method, or do you make assumptions that you um, about about the profile, the trajectory that you're generating? Um, now we get data from the robot. Uh, there are different interfaces. Um, so basically, every controller from different brands has their own um, way to share the, the data. The simplest way is to share the position through the field bus, but this is obviously too slow. So we talk about uh, repetition rates at, I don't know, five milliseconds or so. This is way too slow. So ideally there's another signal uh, or some recording done at uh, like a millisecond resolution. 
Uh, and then we may also work with, uh, in case of uh, welding with gantries, uh, to use encoder data. And encoder data, they work at uh, high frequencies, so up to four megahertz. Uh, this is really nice for these. Um, most of the electric applications can be done with electric stages because we talk about 2D workpieces. So we don't need a 3D robot that moves the scanner in three dimensions. Uh, 2D um, movement is enough. And then we have, uh, well, standard encoder signals uh, using RS485 as electrical standard. Uh, and this is how it works. And this is, yeah, we call it uh, RTX, so real-time extension or motion or welding on the fly. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot. And now a question from Christian from Optoprim. Yes, hello, good afternoon. Um, one question to Thibault. Uh, I am, one question is why you are preferring the DOE technology and um, what would be if you're using a laser with ring shapes, what, what was your decision or do you consider this as well maybe for your process or with your partners? Oh, we definitely considered it. I mean, if you look um, into the, the press releases of the last weeks, you will see that also the major um, laser suppliers having this kind of ring modes um, let's name it ARM, um, Brightline, AMD, whatever. Um, they, they show that they can also improve the welding speed for bipolar plates. Our approach here was to start with uh, FEM simulations. So we really simulated the humping process for a given laser source, for a given scanner, for a given uh, workpiece properties to really find out what is the ideal power distribution on the workpiece. Um, of course, we could use the ring modes available on the market, but none of these um, rings fitted to our ideal situation. And so this is why we decided to use the ring. Uh, like Nathan said, they can print any kind of ring. And so they printed the ring that we wanted to have. And one thing that is really important here is that it's only a few percentage of the laser power. So normally if you buy a laser, um, and you want to have the laser working at 5% of its nominal power, uh, it's not supposed to work well. Uh, normally, you are um, supposed to work between 10 and 90 or 100% of the laser power available. And here for our wing, we just use a few watt, let's say 80 watt, 100 watt. Um, and uh, traditionally, if you buy a laser, you have for the ring one kilowatt, two kilowatt, and then just using 100 watt is kind of a waste of money. Uh, because the idea here is to have one standard simple, uh, in this case, single mode laser, and the DOE does the job to have the power distribution uh, exactly how we want to have it based on the information we got from the FEM simulation. Okay, so it seems like that the power distribution and maybe diameter was one topic, Yeah. but then also the flexibility in terms of power sharing and getting to a lower level I see, okay. Yeah, yeah. so we had to test the process. So like Nathan uh, showed earlier today, we can uh, rotate the two DOE modules. And by this, we can uh, shift the power from the central beam to the ring. Uh, and we had to look for the right parameters. Of course, this can also be done with the laser. Uh, but at the end now we found for one configuration, the perfect DOE configuration. And mm -hmm. now what we can do, instead of having two mechanical DOEs, we can just print one with a fixed ring mode. Uh, and this is a very simple part that just needs to be inserted, can also be retrofitted in some of our scanners. So um, it's simpler for customers to like, well, just insert some optical module uh, instead of changing the whole laser equipment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I know it's maybe a little bit uh, competing uh, technology, but also on the market, there's a single mode laser with a ring mode laser mm -hmm. or ring right. mode option, even down to 5% of its power. And uh, you also have the possibility to share the power entirely. So everything in the core or everything in the ring, it's a company N-Light AFX laser. It's a very new technology. I think also the only um, laser in the market with that kind of functionality. So maybe for future projects, uh, when you have ideas as well and flexible uh, beam adjustments with lasers, just let me know. We are in the direct neighborhood in uh, Unterschleißheim. So. Yeah, good, free free. Good, good, good good thing, because actually I, I forgot to mention your laser name. I wasn't aware of the new name. I only knew the, the old name. I did not yep. want to mention it. C, <laughs> CFX is a more common way to Correct. use the, the multi, multi mode and high power, but the AFX is up to 1.2 kilowatt or one kilowatt, and it has a single wall core and a ring around. So 
basically everything what you need and a very high depth of focus, I think, which is also very important for scanner applications. And you Christian, should they, they released it at the Epic product launch two months ago. So I was really excited that they used this platform, exactly. the Epic platform, to release that new product. It was truly fascinating. I think it is time now to go to the next speaker. So let's give the floor to one company that meant a lot to Epic. It was one of the key companies that started the Epic Association. We go, of course, to Coherent. And we are meeting Frank Dane, the senior sales manager for automotive industry. Frank, thank you very much for being with us as the key company of laser technology for automotive. What's on your mind? The floor is yours. Thank you very much. So, um, yeah, I'm happy to, to jump into the discussion about Ring and Core. And uh, this is, uh, in principle, what I wanted to show you today, because uh, uh, it seems that you do not know our ARM technology so far. Um, so I'm Frank, yeah, thank you for the introduction, Jose. I started in the beginning of this year at Coherent. I'm strategically building up the emotive market in Europe uh, together with my colleagues. And uh, today, I, uh, due to the limitation of time, I want to present um, the most important product I think we have developed already some years ago for that market. So uh, Dave, do you see my presentation? Yeah. So Dave mentioned already in the first presentation, uh, Rolf in Zena, which was acquired by Coherent five years ago. So our headquarters is based in Santa Clara in Silicon Valley in California. Uh, we have uh, 5,000 employees, 1.5 billion turnover, and uh, what is important, we have uh, 27 manufacturing sites worldwide and, and 19 application centers, and also we are worldwide present with our service and sales offices. Um, most important, I would say, is that we have a direct customer work on application and projects and uh, in our apps labs. And, um, Coherent has a very wide portfolio of products. Since we have acquired several companies in Germany, uh, Wolfenzina in Hamburg, CO2, lasers, we have dealers. Um, we have our systems group in Munich. So that means um, we have many production sites in Europe, uh, specifically also in Germany. So for CO2, uh, Excimer laser, fiber, uh, then uh, picosecond laser. Uh, so it means every laser type which you consider is existing for the specific markets we have. Um, talking about immobility, e um, Christian and Nathan and Thibault, uh, you may know our arm laser already. Uh, we can regulate the ring and core between one and 100%, not five. And um, According to the discussion we already had in this meeting before, I added this slide uh, shortly, some minutes ago. Uh, it gives you the overview. So really the, the advantage of this laser uh, is that we really can use different power level, which is separately controlled between one and 100% in the wing and core. And in addition to that, we have applied many applications in our application center in Hamburg so we also use different fibers because this is what we do based on the application results, which we identify with the scanner optics of the colleagues, which are in this meeting here as well. Uh, we define uh, the optimization of our product. So that means, in fact, the market response on the application gives us the insight for developments, for example, of specific fiber geometrics in a diameter. So I would just want to go back to the slide before. You see here the power distribution uh, in the ring and core and the, what, what the specific interesting thing of this technology is that for the immobility, where we have very thin material like copper, aluminium, thin layers and foils, we can weld it uh, also a thicker material, or what is very interesting, even the combination of aluminium with copper, where we know that we have a different melting point. And um, the ARM technology, together with uh, wobbling, for example, enables us really to combine those two different metals for the quality which is needed. And as we all know here, I think you're all aware what challenges we have also uh, if we go in pure aluminum or pure copper. So I, um, I did not 
jump into specific applications because it would kill the time. Um, just to say where we are mostly active actually, and that was commented by Rüdiger and uh, all the other colleagues uh, also before is, is of course the e-mobility market. So Marcos mentioned that very precise before. And um, so this system actually is used in different power ranges. It was different fiber diameters, also with different scanner optics in battery manufacturing um, for the component manufacturing, contact welding, bus bar, uh, cantle lit, uh, whatever you think about. Also the power electronics are important. Like this is most likely a thicker copper material with a welding that's up to six, eight millimeters, which we have achieved. And um, we already had it. Rudiger has shown it with his machines at Zeltranger. We have uh, the hairpin welding, stator welding. In addition to that, we are actually working also on the preparation of the hairpin material itself. And we have it had today several times. Um, bipolar plate welding. So we have welded with very good results with 800 to 1,000 millimeter per second some weeks ago. So um, this is actually um, not talking about the vision system. I, I'm actually, I have to admit, I'm not sure what we have used in this test. I was not participating in that, but I do agree um, to uh, what was discussed before, of course, the high speed of, of this application and the, the length of the weld beam itself due to the dimension is of course a, a big challenge. This is no question. Um, beside that, I mentioned all the battery topics. Uh, we have the classic things like uh, body in white, uh, car body parts, um, e-motor I've already explained. So this picture here on the white side shows you where specifically we are actually in processes with the automotive industry. So that means academy plastic welding of interior components. It can be the, the, the backlights of the car, plastic welding with diode laser. Um, and But with the arm technology, of course, for the high current power parts, um, I'm talking about um, high power level of the laser, which is above one kilowatt up to 10. And you, you see here, just want to show you this overview again, um, what we can offer. Um, for the bipolar plate welding, we use the first one, the single mode arm with four kilowatts with a, a specific 2D optics. And um, as I said, we achieved relatively or promising good results. And um, so that means, uh, we offer this different range of, of power level for the core and the wing, and um, it absolutely depends on the application. This, this is what we clearly have to say. Of course, we have the experience from the laboratory test trials with our customers, but in specific cases, uh, really, we need to discuss, and we always go the way that over the application so that we discuss before what is the customer application, how does a part look like, what is the expectation of welding time, process parameters, and so on. And then uh, specifically, we do execute the testing in usually together with the customer, or if we do it alone, you, you definitely get the report out of it. And later on, we can do the analysis. So this is a really broad spectrum where we are actually in. But again, e-mobility is the most dynamic market I personally experienced in my 30 years of work. And um, so it's very interesting to be in that. And I, I agree um, also to Marco's statement that I think also that the fuse of technology, we see that with Gossin in France and the companies which are producing trucks with hyd hydrogen drives or buses um, for the passenger car. Uh, we need to see how this is going to develop, but it's definitely, from my perspective, is absolutely a mar market opportunity. Um, yeah, I kept it short due to the time, which is um, already um, one quarter uh, hour left for ending. What is my expectation? What is our expectation? I, I can only 
um, motivate you to contact us for any need you have in existing applications where you say we, we, we have a good process, it's working, but maybe we can improve it due to timing, for example, or even the quality, of course, and um, or which is in most cases with battery manufacturing, the case is that they really start from the beginning and we, we guide it uh, them to develop the process. So this is both our approach. Um, and uh, yeah, for you, the team here, I know most of the companies, uh, two or three were new to me um, in the kind of vision and uh, measurement technology, uh, but I'm really also looking forward. And I think we already from history have some good contacts to many of these participants here today. So I'm absolutely open. Um, for any discussion and help so this is what i would like to offer and yeah. i can really motivate thanks a lot, you Frank. Yeah, yeah thanks a lot you did motivate them for sure because there are already a lot of questions in the chat people healthily discussing among what is better but let's give the floor first to thibault because he asked the original question to you uh yeah being born in one of your first slides so please thibault you can ask your question yourself <laughs> okay Thank, thank you for showing this really nice overview of all the different arm lasers. This information is always really good for, for us as an integrator because our customers, they like to use the arm laser. Um, yeah. one, one issue I see with this wing mode lasers, um, all wing mode lasers, not just the arm, uh, definitely all, is that the wing mode uh, and the central beam, they have very different numerical apertures. And for us as a scanner manufacturer, uh, we are limited to small uh, apertures because we want to have small mirrors to be really fast. Uh, and then if we have small um, optics, so 30, 35 millimeters, uh, yeah. we face the issue that um, the collimation lengths cannot be so long because otherwise we will lose the power of the ring. But if the collimation is too short, the intensity of the central beam is really high and mm -hmm. may destroy the coating. So even though the, the wing mode lasers are really good from an application perspective, it's giving sometimes headache. What is the right scanner for the right yeah. laser? Uh, because yeah. even, we may either lose power for the wing in the aperture and the collimation units gets warm or yes. there's too much in the intensity on the optics. So um, to, to make it short, do you think there's a possibility one day to have uh, wing mode lasers where also the wing has a small numerical aperture? I think it, it, it depends. I think we need to gather, we work together in, in this fact. So, um, what we as a source supply, we have own optics, as you know, uh, but uh, of course, we are usually um, working together with you or with the other colleagues from the other companies. So, that means, in fact, what I mentioned before, we really have to. Uh, we really have to make the test together with the different systems, uh, even when we have customer applications where we were asked to find the right scanner for this application. We also, of course, have to test several which are existing. Um, to that question, um, yeah, I think it would be a development process also together with one partner to, to work on this topic. And um, that, that would be my proposal, yeah. Yeah, talking about scanner here, there was a lot of the going on in private. <laughs> so Thailand, now you can maybe ask the question and propose maybe even yourself <laughs> from Rayleigh. Yeah, thank so. you. <laughs> yes. Frank, thank you very much for the nice uh, presentation. I have a question. You mentioned that you made uh, a few weeks or a few days ago a test with your arm laser, with the ring mode laser, which is a pretty interesting technology. Mm -hmm. Did you make comparisons between single mode lasers where you are using a wobble uh, on the scanner unit with high frequency compared to the arm laser without wobbling and um, is there a, is there a big difference between in the results you achieve i think we made this comparison but i guess for the details we have to ask i have to ask eternally because i have not the full picture of that okay in, in the end, we decided to use this combination for the single mode arm with four kilowatts for the bipolar plate rail length. I, and I assume, which is clear to me because we have the different laser sources in the lab that we have tried 
all of them and looked which combination was the best one to, to achieve the results. This is how we usually work. Uh, it's, of course, based by experience, which power level and which uh, laser type is uh, uh, most applicable. But in the end, it would be tested. So I can only take your question and address it uh, to my colleague, uh, Peter Kalage, who is the lab manager in Hamburg. Frank, you should know that Ray Lace is one of the success stories that we have in Europe on laser scanning. And Thailand is a really well-known person when it comes to laser scanning. Thailand, remember, epic membership, please. Ray Lace, we want to have Ray Lace as an epic member. Very important, <laughs> Thailand. Do not forget, <laughs> yes. send us the form as soon as possible. I can't wait to have your form. I will. Uh, one yes, more question for I you, will, Frank, coming all the way from the YouTube universe. A very important company in the EPIC network is Sinova. And they're wondering how fast can ARM switch completely from ring to center? Yeah, it's, in, it's permanently independently controlled. So I mentioned, uh, let me check, I have to open the presentation again. You have, um, let me, uh, I closed it, sorry. Um, give me one second, I don't have it in, in mind. Now, are we talking, are we talking microseconds? Are we talking seconds? Are we talking minutes? And then later on, you can have the discussion with him. Yeah, one second. In the meantime, I want to welcome to the room a very important company in the field of beam shaping, coming all the way from Kain. We had the beam shaping masters, Kai Labs. Thank you very much for being with us today. Tell us how you can help Frank and the other laser manufacturers in the room with beam shaping. Marcus, pay special attention to this. You will love it. Kai Labs, the floor is yours. So we have, just to answer your question, yes. uh, I think it answered it. Uh, it's a five kilohertz modulation. So I, you see you see my picture? Mm -hmm. No, not yet. Not yet, uh, sorry. Um, again. Let's see. So we have at five kilohertz, a closed loop operation power control between one and 100% at five kilohertz. Okay. And the answer by the key company, Sinova, is answered hereby. And they're going to contact you because they want to help you on that. Jeremy Devoin from Please, Sinova, thank you very much for your question from YouTube channel. And now let's continue with the last speaker. We say that okay. the best for the last. We went to one of the users of the ILU Association. We go to Talent System. Thank you once again, ILU, for providing this key user of lasers. The Talent Systems is one of the tier one suppliers of contract manufacturing manufacturing of the automotive industry, and is represented by Ibai Sanchez. Ibai Sanchez, buenas tardes. Thank you very much for taking the floor and the last speaker of this fantastic meeting. The floor is yours. Hi, hello. Well, buenas tardes uh, to all. So yes, uh, thank you, Jose, for the, for the presentation. Well, this is the, the first time for, for us presenting our our technology here. So we will be talking about uh, uh, something or some application a little bit uh, different, not for uh, welding. We will be, or I will be talking about uh, laser hardening, but in a very, very specific uh, field, uh, and also about a very, very specific application that it's a little bit different from the other laser hardening applications that maybe uh, you have been talking about or you have uh, uh, listened about. So, well, we are uh, talent systems. So basically, uh, we are a laser-based uh, company. We are also an integrator, but with our own unpatented technology. So mainly three different uh, areas where we are uh, focused. First of all, the laser surface heat treatment or laser hardening that we will be talking about. Also the laser cladding, uh, different laser cladding applications, mainly for the energy industry and also laser cutting uh, by means of a, of a scanner for the corrugating uh, boards of the different industries. So let's go and jump to the laser surface uh, heat treatment or laser hardening. So uh, let's explain a little bit uh, more in depth uh, where we came from. And I think it's quite uh, important for us also to explain uh, where we have been working and what is our intention with, uh, with this meeting. So well, back in the days in 2008, 2009, we did a start an R&D uh, company here uh, internally with the aim of uh, changing uh, the induction uh, hardening technology with the laser hardening technology. Okay, so here uh, inside our our company, we do have more than 60 year uh, experience in, in doing and supplying uh, machining 
uh, machines or solutions for the automotive industry, especially for crankshaft operation. Okay, so inside inside the, the crankshaft line in the combustion uh, engine, there is a specific application that is the, the hardening operation, typically done by the induction uh, uh, hardening. Okay, so we need to start developing uh, our own uh, technology in order to change or in order to replace that induction technology with a laser technology. Okay, so in 2012, uh, for the United States, for engineering in the United States, gave us the opportunity with a partnership to develop and implement our technology in their production lines. Okay, so we did start validating our technology, our specific technology that I will explain uh, later in the following slides uh, with them, and also implementing our technology in all the production lines around the world. Okay, so right now we are in a position where all the new four and existing four lines for Cranshaft uh, engines or the for Cranshaft uh, productions uh, are made with uh, with laser. That hardening uh, process is made by by laser. Also, uh, in the same uh, way, we have been started working with other OEMs like General Motors, Stellantis Group, with FCA in the United States or Volkswagen in the in Germany. And well, it is also true that we mainly work. Uh, in this point with the United States, more than the 90% of our solutions and machines are there. So, well, it is important also for us to start uh, doing this type of work with other tier one, tier twos uh, here in, in Europe. Okay, we are uh, a Spanish-based uh, company, but mainly working in the United States. So we do have different type of uh, applications uh, inside the automotive industry. So right here, you can see one specific application we are developing for uh, for a very, very specific uh, big OEM in the United States where we are laser hardening uh, a cylinder uh, cylinder blocks inside and just and only those uh, pills that you can see over there. Okay, so it's a very, very specific uh, geometry where we are laser hardening with a case depth of around 400 to 500 microns, uh, a very specific uh, areas. Okay, so we which is the, the main difference between our technology and other laser hardening technologies. Okay, we did develop and we did also patented our own technology where we are integrating a scanner and also we are able to control uh, the energy density that we are applying in any specific point of the part. So dynamically, we are moving and controlling at every moment of a part where we are putting the energy density so how much energy we are putting in order to obtain different type of results okay there is a specific area or there is a specific point in the crankshaft uh, is this old hole or this uh, yellow uh, round that you can see right there that does not need to go uh, harden okay so we need to avoid hardening that part so due to the technology we have uh, patented that we have uh, developed we are able to laser harden the whole uh, band of that uh, uh, current shaft, but avoiding hardening that specific oil hole uh, for lubrication in that specific area. So this is a quite new uh, technology, and this is why uh, we had the advantage and Ford gave us the opportunity to implement our technology and to, to change all the induction machines for the current shaft lines worldwide and to put our uh, laser hardening technology uh, on them. So mainly we do have our own uh, laser technology all the controls of our laser head, uh, they are uh, or they are controlled by our all patented of so uh, software that we have uh, also developed. Then we do have the capacity to do uh, any type of uh, new tech, new approval or new process with our uh, laser prototype uh, machines here internally. And based on that, based on the laser head and based also in our uh, software, we are able to propose and also to offer different type of tanky solutions for different type of clients. Okay, we don't have uh, at this moment, and it is not our intention to have a catalog uh, of just and only, uh, let's say three, four, five or six uh, standard machines. Okay, uh, always the, the base is the laser, always the base is our dynamic uh, technology in order to control the energy distribution and the energy density. But we always offer different type of solutions. We can be talking that we could integrate our solution in a three axis uh, CM uh, movement uh, machine, for example, in a robotic cell. It doesn't matter. We are expert in process. We are not expert in selling just machines. 
or selling a standard machines. So depending on the production lines, we could be talking of different type of, of machines or solutions. Okay, for example, the one uh, above, this is a laser hardening machine for crunch up lines and the productions for those machines are 450,000 uh, units or parts per year. Okay, so they are uh, the cycle times on that, they are quite low and so on. But as you can see, uh, they are different type of, of of applications and solutions where we, we can uh, work with. So different type of applications and different type of processes that we have been working with and working for in the automotive industry, in this case for validating and for implementing different type of, of solutions. So in CANSAFT, in gear sprockets, in cylinder boards, outside uh, the combustion engines, it is also true that right now we are validating different type of applications for the electrical uh, vehicles also also with uh, shafts and different type of components. And also we have been hardening or changing the harness in molds and dies also for, for the automotive industry. And well, more or less, uh, this is all. And right now uh, we are looking for partners, not only for customers or clients, but also for uh, suppliers that uh, could help us and help us also to well follow and to develop uh, different type of processes for different type of, of clients. Ivai, it is great to have you for the first time at an epic meeting. I want to have you more often. Uh, many, many, very few people in our industry actually know talent systems. And when we told them about what you do, they were very impressed and they want to get in touch with you. You finished with something that really resonated with me. You're looking for partners also in the supply side. Can you give me one challenge? Is there one thing that really, if I find, if Francesca will be found, found you the right partner, you will be so happy with us, you will become a member of Epic. Yes, so well, uh, I think one of the great partners could be uh, a laser power unit uh, supply company. Okay, so uh, typically we have uh, been working with uh, uh, IPG, it's uh, our, our partner on this, but in, in any case for different type of applications, we have been working in different type of, of fields. Uh, it would be a great partner or it would be good to know also different type of, of suppliers. And also another type of good partner in the supplier field, it would be uh, a company uh, based or also uh, with a good knowledge on, on robotics and on integrators on different type of uh, robotics uh, applications. Okay, so uh, we do have our own control uh, technicals or techniques uh, here, uh, but well, it is also true that we are open to any type of contact and any type of relationship. That we it's also great to have it. Two ultra fast photonics questions for you. The first one is coming from Blackbird Robotics. Tivol, tell us what's on your mind. Yeah, thank you. Um, well, we do scan lab does um, similar application with the scanners, so processing um, surfaces with this laser um, as a heat treatment. And um, sometimes there's a necessity to use a temperature sensor to control the laser power in real time. Have you um, implemented such a solution that monitors the temperature and controls the laser power in real time? Yes, we do have uh, in all of our machines, we are integrated coaxial uh, to the laser beam a pyrometer in order to control a real time uh, processing. Uh, in order to control what is the temperature we are obtaining in the surface. Okay, this in, in production lines, uh, we are setting limits plus, plus minus 5%. And uh, if we are above or lower uh, those limits, well, uh, automatically the, the machine, the solution detects it and reacts uh, that specific path. So yes, all of our machines are integrating pyrometers in order to control the temperature of the surface. And if I may ask, what kind of scanner technology are you using? Or is it mostly a static beam uh, using, for example, a DOE module? Sorry, repeat that. Is it, I, is I, it I, a scanner? Is it a scanner you're using to make yes. this kind of shape? Uh, yes, we are using a scanner. We are, uh, well, uh, we do use a five millimeter spot. We are using typically between six to eight kilowatts mm -hmm. and we are putting uh, or passing through, uh, through a scanner. So uh, the main, uh, the base of our technology is moving that five millimeter spot really, really fast in the surface. So the faster you move, the less energy you are putting. So this is, so we are combining uh, those two. So by means of our uh, software, we are able to control the scanner in a way where we are able to control the energy density we are putting by moving it faster or slower, that five millimeter spot with a density of six to eight kilowatts. Ivai, the next question in the room comes from the company Holo or the DOE masters. Nathan, what's on your mind? I just wanted to ask if you use some sort of shaping, for example, for two lines. I know a lot of hardening uses lines or rectangular pixels that are scanned to increase speed. And it seems that you are not using some shaping. Have you considered this? 
uh, we can use any type of shaking, shaping we would like. So uh, typically uh, we are using like uh, a line shape or we are using eight shapes, like a shape with an like an yeah, eight. Lisa Zhu, like you mean? Yes, from, yes. Yeah. So we do have different type of energy distributions in the, let's say in the advanced area and in the rear area. So different type of energy distributions and this way we are able to control. So with our scanner, we can do any type of shape. We can uh, also, uh, do triangles, we can do lines, we can do eights, we can do circles, uh, whatever we, we would like. Okay, yeah, no matter. Thank you. In the middle of this, in two hours, you have to address every single challenge. We couldn't address the, the challenge of power supplies, and we do have the key company in power supplies in the room. We couldn't address the challenge of uh, laser eye safety. We had the key companies laser eye safety in the room, but we could answer some of the challenges of the industry. To close the meeting uh, and to ask the final question, I would like to give the floor to the person who started this a circular economy. Dave McClellan, thank you very much for being with us. Ask the final question in the meeting and send us off the way that we deserve. Thank you, Jose. Um, yeah, I just wanted to ask, uh, Ibai, thank you for your presentation. Uh, did you consider direct diode lasers at all as a source for uh, hardening? And so traditionally, they have been used uh, in that uh, application quite a lot in the past. Uh, yes, well, uh, right now we are considering different type of, of lasers for different type of applications, not only for uh, for hardening. It is it is true that uh, for crunch of hardening, in this case, as we have been supplying so so many machines, more than thirty machines worldwide for different type of uh, of clients, uh, we have been using always the, the same type of, of lasers. In any case, it is also true, and this is why uh, we are here. Uh, we are considering using different type of, of lasers, not just and only the ones we are we are using. So, so yes, we are considering any type of different lasers because, uh, as I have explained, uh, we are not a company just and only uh, focused on one uh, industry, one sector, as we are uh, a company based on processes, and we can offer our technologies to, to different type of uh, of uh, processes or different type or for different type of applications. So yes, considering any type of, uh, of lasers. If I thank you very much, muchas gracias, es que ricasco. I got to say <laughs> that this meeting has been fantastic. First of all, e-mobility is a mega trend. The biggest technology trend, remote welding. The market challenges we have scouted actually, femtosecond lasers with ultra high power for micro nano welding has been one key challenge expressed clearly by one of the companies in the room, but also also as weird and in weird camera solutions that are ultra fast, far beyond the five kilo frame per second. Also the main industrial dilemma, that was spectacular. Beam shaping technology for ring shapes. There are many different solutions. The planner technology of Kylabs, the DOEs, the CVCs from Sivan and ARM coherent technology was presented today in a spectacular fashion. All of you, thank you so much for a fantastic two hours. I hope that at least one lead was generated. That was your task. And mine is to send you off the way that you deserve. And that concludes the public part of today's meeting. If you are in our Zoom room, our informal private discussion is about to start. I call it virtual drinks with friends. And we all know follow-up is important. But for now, if you are watching on YouTube, that's where we leave you for today. Thanks to the Epic Production crew and all the sponsors for making today's event possible. More details about upcoming meetings are on our website. And if you want to get in touch with any of the participants, all you have to do is contact me directly and I will make sure you get introduced. It is all about